Favor means God Almighty has laid his hand upon your life and he is going to use you for his eternal purposes. In 1 Samuel, it says that David was a courageous man and a warrior, and he has a way with his words. That's funny, huh? He is handsome. I kind of feel like David here. All right. And the Lord, come on, say, the Lord is. So anytime the Lord says he's with you, that means there's favor on you. Amen, somebody. But here we find that favor, when it comes upon you, will guarantee approval, God's approval, God's success, God's blessing, and God's victory. When we live, I want you to catch this, in radical obedience is living a lifestyle of radical favor. In 1 Samuel 18, it says that the Lord was with David and, read with me, say, he continued, thank God for three of you, and he continued, thank God for nine of you, and he what? To what? In what ways? Because the Lord was with him. And that's what God wants to do with his favor on our lives. One of the ways you know favor is on you is you'll begin to prosper in every area of your life. Not just one area, not just three, but you'll prosper in your relationship with God. You'll prosper in your health. You'll prosper in your marriage. You'll prosper with your children. You'll prosper with your grandchildren. You'll prosper in the call of God. You'll prosper in your career. God wants to prosper every area of your life. When I, when I, I, I like, I don't eat them much as, I don't eat them very much at all because I'm, I just try to maintain this weight. Come on, somebody. This is a tough season. You have to have faith in the season. But you know, normally back in the day when I used to get burritos, you know, you say, I want everything in that thing, you know, con todo, you know I mean, everything, yeah, everything. You got radish, throw that in there. You got a chihuahua, throw them in there. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's a joke. I, I love dogs. But anyway, say favor. <laughs> to eat my chihuahua. No, I'm just kidding. No. But the truth is, how many know God wants to bless us in every area of life? And here you find the same statement that the Lord said, I'm with Mary. I prospered her. I gave her a miracle. I'm with David. I prospered everything he did. And, and that's, that's a very important that, that, that you, can, you can really have that uh, affirmation on your life that the Lord is with you. Now, now listen, listen to what I'm going to say. Are you a born again Christian? If you say yes, the Lord is with you in measure. So he's already with you. So there's already a level of favor on your life. You understand that? He's with you. But... He's not just talking about him being with you like, like in that form. He's talking about being with you on assignment. Let me, let me, yeah, exactly. Come on, say amen, somebody. And that, now, now we're going from where every Christian is to where most Christians are not. Okay, so, so, so every Christian has a, a level of favor because every Christian, God is with you and in you. So there's already a level of favor on your life. But if you're going to move into that supernatural favor, that next level of favor, then at that point, you, God has to be with you on assignment. That means there's a level of obedience you're walking in that most people are not walking in. You're living in, the, in a, a lifestyle of radical obedience, and that radical obedience releases supernatural favor. In Acts 13, come on, clap like you want that. Acts 13, 22, it says, after removing Saul... Saul, he made David their king, and God testified concerning him. He says, I found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. And the scripture says, say, he will do. Okay, praise God for leaders. Say, he will do, he will do. Everything, everything I want him to do. Mary said, I'm the Lord's servant. What does that mean? I'll do whatever he wants me to do. If he wants me to carry God in my womb for nine months, let it be. I'm going to probably lose Joseph. No one's going to believe me. People are going to think I'm crazy, but it doesn't matter what people think. I'm not going to let the fear of man, the fear of rejection, stop me from being obedient to God. Here's a big one. I'm not going to allow, some of you allow the fear of being alone to stop you from obeying God. Some of you have never went without a man in your whole life. You never went without a girl. You've always had a boyfriend and a girlfriend. You've never known what it's like to just be with God. 
And when God tried to keep you to himself for a season, I'm talking to singles now, and he wanted to bring you to himself, you always turn to a man or a woman. And God's like, what about me? I could have been that in your life. You know, it's getting around the holiday time. I should probably preach this before Christmas, and I should probably preach it before Valentine's Day. Because some of you are single and ready to mingle, and you're about to do something stupid. Because at the altar of, I don't want to be alone. Some of you need to get off social media because it's feeding your insecurity and your loneliness. Because all your friends are like with their girl, or all your boys are with their girl, and they're like, and, and you want that image. We don't live on image, we live in reality. Are you sure you're ready for this? All right, let's finish now. Nobody move. Nobody get hurt. The, young, the youngsters don't know about that, huh? Come on, somebody. My generation is like, I got you, Pastor. I got you. Got you. you guys, can we go? Can we go deeper? Can, I said, can we go deeper? All right. Okay. Say, oh, man. Okay. Yes, so, okay. 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 Say this with me. Say, God found. So if you have to find something, that means you were what? Let me see a phone. Is the man a phone? A phone. Okay. All right. All right. You like your phone? Do you, you, you love your phone? Okay. You may be seated. It's my phone now. Okay, if you lost this phone, and it was like hours later, and you were waiting for like this important call, and you couldn't find your phone, how would you feel? Upset. Upset. Okay, here's your phone. Let me see your phone. Now, you're a saved already. Okay, I'm just kidding, okay. All right, because you, you're going to answer fake. Okay, now watch. This is your phone, right? And that's your wife? Okay, and your beautiful daughter, right? And they call you, your wife calls you with this phone? Okay, what if she calls you over and over and you don't answer? <laughs> exactly, right? Okay, so you lost your phone and she's thinking, what the heck is this guy doing? How are you feeling because you lost your phone? Worried. Okay, there you go. You're going to be honest, Jose? Okay, let me see your phone. This is a baller phone. Wow. Okay. Jeez, Lord. Okay. Some, some people just got it like that. All right. Now. <laughs> Somebody want a phone? Anybody want a phone? You want a phone? Want a phone? Want a phone? <laughs> and so, it, 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 you know, you, 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 you run the, help run the whole school, so you got a lot of responsibility, and all of a sudden, you know if you lose this, you're in trouble. Come on, somebody. He's got 100 students under him. So, so if you lost your phone, Alicia's trying to call you. Pastor Liz and me are trying to call you. Everyone's trying to call you. And Jose is nowhere to be found because he lost his phone. How do you feel? Anxious. Anxious. Worried. Upset. That's what God felt when he was looking for somebody who would be obedient. Now, God's not worried, of course, and God's not anxious, but at the same time, you can sense there's an urgency from heaven of the lack of people that will obey God. Saul was chosen by God, was given the dream of heaven, and he decided, no, I'm too afraid of what people think about me to go ahead and obey God. Instead of obeying God, I'm going to go ahead and obey the people. And by doing that, God says, okay, I'm taking my favor from you, and I'm going to put it on somebody else, but I don't know who yet. So God went on a search to put his favor on somebody who would be obedient. And we find that after removing Saul, he made David their king, and God testified about him. He said, I found David, the son of Jesse, and he's a man after my own heart. He's a man who will do everything I want him to do. 
What happens when God finds a man or a woman who will do everything he wants them to do? Because now you're finding somebody like Mary that says, I'm your servant. You're finding somebody like David that says, whatever you want done, I'm the man, I'm the woman for the job. That's called obedience. And this type of obedience brings increased favor as disobedience brings the opposite. It brings the lack of favor. You ever notice that some people keep getting blessed and other people seem like they're stuck? It's because one is more obedient than the other. This one may be more talented. This one may have more hookups. This one may have more uh, money and all of it and everything going on in the natural, but they don't have obedience. And watch me, obedience will outweigh anything man can give you in the natural. Come on, shout like favor comes with obedience. Obedience. And sacrifice is to lay aside our agendas and to pick up his. Obedience requires we face our fears and we conquer them through faith. It's a very powerful statement because how many people even at the hearing of my voice watching online or even in this room are going to watch years from now on YouTube or something like that, that God has been dealing with you about an area of your life, a decision you have to make for him and you keep telling God no because of your fear of being alone, because your fear of being rejected by a family member, because your fear of being rejected by friends, because of your fear of failure. And all those fears keep saying no to God. And every time you say no, then God has to take his favor and go find somebody else that says yes, and he'll put his favor on them. Let, let, let it, let's not go another year where God has to say, not you, not you, not you, but I'm going to have to give it to you because you're too afraid to obey. Oh, come on. I know. Not much clapping, but it's good. Say obedience, obedience. is our humility in action. And disobedience is our arrogance in action. 1 Samuel 15, 23, uh, God said about Saul, he said, rebellion is like the sin of divination. It's like witchcraft. And it's like arrogance. It's like the wickedness of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. God told me 20 years ago, go to the Pharaoh of Whittier and go tell that Pharaoh, let my people go. You don't think I was afraid? You don't think I had a lot of reasons why not to obey? But why did I obey? Because God said. <laughs> 27 years ago, I was dating a girl. And it was real clean. We didn't mess around. And then we didn't even kiss. We, we held hands, but it was pretty serious dating. And I remember, you know, okay, Lord, you know, this is the one. We'll go, you know. And I remember her coming into the office. I was at the pastor's office. I worked there. He, she was coming in. We were going to go out. And as she came in, the, while she was in the car, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he had been dealing with me to let her go. But I kept wrestling with God. There was no favor on that relationship because that wasn't God's best for my life. And she was coming in and the Lord spoke to me, says, why are you messing around with somebody else's old lady? Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. I said, exactly. I said, oh, just like that. Oh. And she walked in. I said, it's over. And she looked at me like, what, what are you, crazy? I said, no, nope, it's over. You're not the one. God has somebody better for you. God has somebody else for you. You're not the one. So let's just break up here. Let's, I'm not going to waste your time. You're not going to waste my Come on. But, but I've seen people ignore that, wrestle with God, and say, you know what? Uh -uh. And, they, and, they, and you know what God will eventually do to you? He'll say, go ahead. You can have it. And he'll bless you as much as he can, but it wasn't his best. And you have to live with knowing that that was never his best. And you can't three years later when it's not working out, it's like, I'm divorcing you. No, now you got to make it the best. 
Y'all don't want to hear me preach. Everybody want favor, but they don't want to obey. And when she showed up, God says, that's the one. And I said, favor. And I was like, thank God I obeyed. But we are making decisions like that, big decisions in our life where we don't have, my staff knows me already. I don't make big decisions. I'll say, wait. Why? I haven't heard from God. Or we'll go forward and I'll say, stop. They say, what? I said, I don't feel good about it. Everything looks right. Everything feel, looks right. But inside, I'm getting a check. Let me pray about it. Lord, what do you want me to do? Sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's not loud now. Sometimes if you're fighting the devil, you got to know. And then you have confidence. You know that God's with you. And because he's with you, favor is going to follow you. Oh, I think in the church, we have a whole lot of disobedient folk. Ain't listening to God. You know, oh, y'all, y'all got me mad. Sit down. I'm going to read it. I'm going to preach. You got, you got folk going like this. Watch it. Ready? Ready? I'm leaving this church. I'm leaving here. I'm going down the street. I don't care where you go. If God never told you, see, I don't care if people come and go. Because if God called you, you can't leave. And if you're not supposed to be here, you can't stay. Come on. Somebody ought to shout like, you're, whoa. Wait a minute. Do you want to be blessed or not? I said, do you want to have favor or not? I'm trying to teach you how to walk in supernatural favor. Are you sure? Yeah. Then say, preach, preacher, preach it, man. Preach it. All right. All right. So we're not going to be arrogant. Tell your neighbor, don't be arrogant with God. You know, you meet some people, they act so humble. They're like, God bless you, brother. God bless you. But they're so rebellious to God. That's arrogance. Where God, that's, wouldn't that have been arrogance? The girl comes. I said, no, God, you don't know. She's a nice person. This is the one. And God's like, she ain't it. How arrogant is that? And God is sitting back looking at Lizzie going, Really? You're going to choose that over that? You idiot. You, you prideful, arrogant fool. And see, we think fear is no big deal. But if I would have stayed in that relationship, only one thing would have kept me in that relationship. Fear of never getting another one. Fear of missing out. Fear of being alone. And that fear would have held me in bondage. And I would have never stepped into my destiny. Who am I talking to right now? Some of you need to let your soul go. What is your soul? It could be a relationship. It could be a business endeavor. It could be a a, a career decision. But you got to let your soul go if you want supernatural favor. Come on, clap. I'm preaching. If I'm, can I go deeper or not? I'm feeling pushback right now, but I don't want no pushback. Lean in. I'm giving you the word of the Lord. Lean in and take a word. I got another word. If I'm doing something and and it's not working out, I don't just keep doing it. I stop. I say, God, where did I miss it? Did I make a left turn when I should have went right? Did I go to Nineveh when I should have went to, uh, did I go to Tarsus when I should have went to Nineveh? Lord, and, and I stop. And God's using that circumstance to talk to you and talk to you, and you ain't listening, and you're like bailing. Ah, ah. What are you doing? Just stop, wait, hold up a minute, seek God. God, what do you want me to do with this relationship? God, what do you want me to do with this thing? God, you show me. Give me a word. I ain't moving to you. Give me a word. Some of you need to lock yourself up in a prayer room for three days like Jacob said. I ain't moving unless you bless me. I ain't moving without a word. I need a word. Because once you get a word from God, now you've got the green light. And I don't care what Pharaoh comes against you. I don't care what giant comes against you. If God is on your side, supernatural. Come on, shout like I'm talking to the people of God today.